I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace and peace of Jesus, our risen Lord, be with you all. And a warm welcome to all of you who are joining us here for Mass here in St. Aidan's, and those of you who are joining us by means of the satellite transmission from our church, that you may feel welcome, that you may feel welcome in our parish church, and that you may feel that you are joined to this Christian community as we pray together. We welcome in a special way our students of the Caritas program from St. Benedict's High School. We are here to participate in their parish experience and to help our parish. We welcome you, my dear young people, in a special way. We gather as God's beloved children, conscious of God's need, conscious of our need for God and for the many graces that we deserve and need in our lives. So let's open our hearts to him now, to the God, the giver of gifts. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the message of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the receiver. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may attain to attain, that we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let's be seated now to listen to the word of God. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his ways, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are high. Yes, the heavens are as high above the earth as my ways are above your ways. My thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is close to all who call him. The Lord is close to all who call him. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. The Lord is great, highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. The Lord is close to all who call him. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate, to all his creatures. The Lord is close to all who call him. The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. The Lord is close to all who call him. 
The second reading today comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ will be glorified in my body, whether by my life or by my death. Life to me, of course, is Christ, but then death would bring me something more. But then again, if living in this body means doing work which, I ha which is having good results, I do not know what I should choose. I am caught in this dilemma. I want to be gone and to be with Christ, which would be very much the better. But for me to stay alive in this body is a much more urgent, urgent need for your sake. Avoid anything in your everyday lives that would be unworthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour and again at about the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then, at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more men standing round, and he said to them, Why have you been standing here, idle, all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, Call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired about the eleventh hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner. The men who came last, they said, have done only one hour, and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a very heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why be envious? Because I am generous. Thus the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, a very simple message today for the Gospel, for us to try and live out during the coming week. Christ is to be glorified in my body. In other words, all that I do and say and think this week must give glory to Christ. I'm going to tell you a story from the past. There was a great religious leader in India called Gandhi, whom you know about, I'm sure. And he was reputed to say that he believed in Christianity as a religion, but he did not believe Christians. The implication was that he did not see Christians living out their faith that they said they believed in. Indeed, when he was approaching Christianity, he tried to enter a church which was filled with white Christians, and he was told 
that his church was down the road for people of his colour. Charming, I don't think. Christ will be glorified in my body, says St. Paul. Imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, how the world would look if Christians everywhere did live out their faith. We are not dismayed. There is great work being done by the church throughout the world, in Asia, Africa, South America, powerful work in education and medicine, helping crops grow and businesses flourish. And indeed, our own young people from St. Benedict's have a partnership with the high school in Malawi to help bring them the benefits of education, which they themselves appreciate so much. But when it comes to it, when it comes down to it, my brothers and sisters, the question God will ask me at the end of my life is this. Who have you loved? How much have you loved them? Some people will have done a lot more than you. Like the workers in today's gospel who worked all day. But don't compare yourself to others. My dear brothers and sisters, God is only asking you to give what you can give. Even if it's like the workers of the 11th hour who only did one hour's work. In God's book, all he wants for us is to glorify him by what we say and do. Once we get that message, let's try and live it. It probably means that there is a bit of room for, for repentance and change of heart as we accept this invitation, this invitation to glorify God in all that we say and do. So let's get on with it. Make the changes and give glory to God. We stand together now and profess our faith using the form of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. My dear brothers and sisters, on this weekend when we saw our young people receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in confirmation yesterday, we give thanks to God for all the graces and gifts and fruits of the Spirit that are apparent in our lives, that come directly from God's abundance. Let us seek now his grace and mercy as we bring before him our prayers. That the whole church which is joined to Christ our Saviour in one baptism, one faith, and one Lord, and one Spirit, may be renewed in faith, hope, and love. Lord, hear us. That Pope Francis, Bishop John, and all the leaders of our churches may guide us in the footsteps of the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. That the, that the young people of our parish community who have been confirmed in their faith in the Catholic Church may have the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit to persevere faithfully in their discipleship of Christ. Lord, hear us. That all Christian believers and the communities to which they belong may come 
to perfect unity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the light and peace of the risen Christ may transform the darkness and pain of our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That those who are suffering, bereaved, or downcast may experience the healing grace of Jesus, our Savior. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That those who have died may rise to new life and see God face to face. We remember Natasha Cooper and Mary Campbell and the anniversaries of Patrick Kelly. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Mary, Mother of the Church, always responded to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We ask her intercession and example as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, hear the prayers of our hearts this day, and in your love and mercy grant what we need, that our lives may glorify you in all that we say and do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your holy people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope, for an we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joy, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Aidan, St. Anthony, St. Mirren, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We join with all those at home who cannot receive communion in this moment in a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never, be, never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. We'd just like to thank all the parishioners and teachers who helped us to prepare the children yesterday, the young people of um, first year at St. Benedict's High School, for their confirmation, which they should have received at the end of their primary seven class in St. Anthony's. And especially, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, David Keenan, who helped prepare the boys and girls for their confirmation just before the summer. And uh, to ask the Lord to bless the young people with their gifts and talents that they may enrich the church. They are the future of the church. Please do keep them specially in your prayers. We have uh, still difficult times ahead of us, but we don't lose faith in the Lord who walks with us and who gives us courage and who gives us strength and who casts out every fear. So may the Lord bless you with that peace and give you his strength and courage in this coming week. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you with his love. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Mass is ended, go forth to proclaim to, to the world the good deeds of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>